Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another segment of Chisholm's Chair Shop. I appreciate you tuning in so much. Um, it's a little pretty early in the morning. Um, got up super excited early and uh, came down to see the chair. I, fin I went ahead and finished the back, okay? And I'm going to use that as a reference point um, when I weave the seat, which I'm going to do the first two steps um, today. So um, it really came out well. The template method, everything, it just, I'm so happy. I don't have to experiment with it again or anything. And I would do it exactly the same way on my next one. So really liked uh, the way it turned out. So I'll show you that in a minute. I've got a couple other uh, projects going on that I've been working on simultaneously. I wanted to show you real quick. I got a um, and yesterday I was fortunate to get an order for a dining room table I'm going to make out of black walnut. So I have about four, five projects to wrap up and then I can start on that table. Um, and I want to show you those projects. Some of, some of the neat things I've got uh, going on right now, I was going to show you those, some of which I might film, and then I'll show you the chair. Stand by. This piece is a cherry secretary. I've got it upside down because I had to re-glue this leg here. Um, very tricky repair because it broke right here. Right at where it meets. So I put a six inch dowel in it that goes all the way down into here. Um, and it really, I'm so happy. Look, look, when you look at the leg behind it, it just, it, I put a, a jig kind of between it, you know, a story pole between it, between the two legs, uh, front and back and left to right. And it really got in the right spot. But what I noticed was, it's really interesting. If you look at the carving on this leg here, and then if you look at its friend here, they're totally different. This leg here has been replaced. It's not the same color as that leg, that leg, or that leg, if you really look at it. And then the carving is different. So at one point, this broke before. It's broken multiple times, I can tell. But it, it broke and they replaced it. So it could have broken somewhere else in the initial break but anyway it went back great I've got to do I've got to fill in with some wood here and here and kind of recarve that back in and then I can stand it up but then it has some other issues I told you in another episode this was a married piece this is a perfect example if you look at this little piece here that connects here up to here it's missing its tenons and there's a nail so, at some point, yeah, something went awry here. So, what I think I'm going to do is put a cap over this and then come down to it through that piece of wood and just cover this. This will never be seen. It's the underside of a desk that's been manipulated. So, just a thin piece of cherry and capture that and it won't ever fail on the customer. His drawers won't sag and... Uh, I think I'm going to fix that. But anyway, I've got some joint, it's got some joint issues w that are kind of blown apart in places. I've just got to touch up and I can get this one on its feet. Again, this one had a single, excuse me, had a single poplar drawer bottom, one piece. That's a good 20 inches or so. It's pretty interesting. That's a big, big, uh, big piece of wood there. Uh, stand by. This piece here is very interesting. This is a painted piece. Um, my clients, I believe, uh, great grandmother was in the USO, and I don't know the whole story, but this has something. To, she she got this while in Europe, I think, and it's got peeling pain and issues like that. But we're gonna. I've talked with the customer. I've done the casework and got it nice and tight again. And it doesn't wobble, and um, we're gonna. I'm gonna brush it, brush the loose paint off, and we're gonna kind of just encapsulate it with one coat of one or two coats of shellac and just keep it how it is for now after I replace all of this missing carving. There are 19 pieces um, for me to fix and then I can paint them. Then I'm going to paint them all 
repaint them all so it all blends. Um, you can see all the missing missing pieces I've got to replace. Uh, I've got to do that um, par partial of the way done on that one. Um, another interesting thing, this chair, I rush wove a few weeks ago. I didn't photograph it, but I intend to film the rushing of this chair. But I've got to replace this bottom stretcher. You can see the, how the other side has two rungs across. This is missing. And I've got the wood up in another shop, and I'm tapering it to fit. And then I'm going to rush that one. This little piece here I'm going to do for fun. This was my great, great grandfather's. He was a carpenter or cabinet maker in Charleston. It's made of cypress. It, it's nothing fancy. I think he cranked this out in a couple hours just to have a couple side tables. There's no dovetails on the drawer. Um, the drawer bottom's been replaced. It's plywood and not cypress. So something happened to the drawer bottom on this piece along the way, but it'll clean up nice and it'll be handy to have. So that's a good sentimental piece. Um, stand by. And then I've got one more press cane chair to do. And then I have my client's other chair I'm weaving up on my coffee table upstairs. I've got to get those to her. And that pretty much sums it up until I start on the uh, black walnut dining table. So, all right, stand by. Let me show you the back of the chair. I'm so proud. Hold on just one sec. Okay, so here's the chair kind of at a distance. You'll see some pegs in the seat. I've put those there. Those are my markers for when we weave the seat next. But let me zo zoom in on the back as best I can. It's kind of got a white background. But anyway, it came out. I really, really like it. And um, it's going to be a great referral when we weave this seat. So let me get set up. And um, we're going to do the steps one and two on the seat. I've got some cane soaking and uh, it's ready to go, so stand by. So as not to let my camera cut off, I've got the chair up on the bench now. I've got a yoga mat behind it, so I've got a nice stable uh, platform to press down on as we weave. All right, stand by, let me get the cane. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good camera angle on the seat. Let me square it up a little bit and see what it looks like. See if that helps you. Okay, I'm going to move it back a little bit so I can get to it to weave it, but I think that'll show up for you. Okay, so I've got these pegs that are kind of telling me a story of, of uh, not only what the last person to um, weave the chair did but it also I've marked the center you know there's an equal number of holes this way and this way so this is the center of the back and then I found the center of the front here equal holes all the way to this edge I'm counting this hole on this side of the edge like its friend it's on this side of the edge so same number of holes to here same number of holes to here okay what we're going to do is we're just going to lace this thing up, avoiding the curvature at first, okay? So we're going to start and just go over in a, and make a square. And then when we start to hit this curve, we've got to make some decisions, okay? And so what I've done is I've studied the pictures of the last caner. And after this strand comes down, okay to its corresponding hole then in order to keep that spacing which you'll see in a minute they can't he or she came out with a strand and came down to a hole and then came out of here and then stopped so there's about this much distance which is just right maybe a little wide but real close um, this will be full of X's very minimal here but X's at the back front more X's here, X's back here probably, and um, these are going to kind of curve out because if they came straight, you know, some of them might inter interfere with the hole next to it, okay? So they're going to swoop out just a little bit, okay? 
And then these two pegs show me where, um, let's see, what do these tell me? I have to think about those again. I could take them out, but they mean something. Um, and then here's the center, of, and, and same thing corresponds on this side, okay? So um, I think what these are, this one, this peg here corresponds to where this one comes in, this one comes in, that's what it is, and then the one in the corner comes to this one. So these are the three kind of change from the regular of the middle, okay? Yeah, so that's what it is. This one comes into this hole, this one comes into this hole, and then the corner swoops out and comes into this hole. That's how the last person did it, and we're going to check that and see if it... I've looked at the picture. It looks like he or she was right on the money with having to make that decision, and that's one of those things that you... Um, that you have to think about. So this is a very long piece of cane. Okay, so I'm going to find, once again, I'm going to find that snag of where a branch grew out of it or a twig or a vine out of the vine. Okay. And usually you can tell right away, this is a nice piece of cane. Okay, so when I go this way, uh-uh, it's a bump. Okay, this way, it'll pull right across that bump. So that means this end is the tail, okay? So this is the end that I'm gonna bury to start the weave. Normally, I don't have cane quite this long, or usually, I got lucky, you know, they're usually a few pieces that are super long, and I pulled out one of those. So usually I'll start at the middle and go one direction and then the middle in the other direction. But since this piece is so long, I would have extra by the time I get here. I'm going to start um, one, two, three holes from the center and go that way. Okay? So I'm going to go one, two, three, bury it. Then I'm going to peg it. I'm going to get my pegs close and my tools. Okay, so there's a strand hanging down below, right? Okay. So, from the middle, I counted over one, two. I, I'm in the third hole, not including this one. So, one, two, to this hole. And that's going to keep everything nice and square. God, it's a long piece of cane. It's got one little knot in it. Let me undo this. Okay, so let me start again. Always want to keep the shiny side up, so you literally just go all the way down it to the end, keeping the shiny side up. Okay. And then we're going to go in the third hole. So one, two, three. One, no, yeah, one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, and then we're just going to lace this thing up. So we'll come down to this hole. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down, but I'm going to slightly turn it towards this hole so that underneath it makes a nice loop and the shiny side is down. You know, I'm just going to coax it where it's going. Okay, um, it's been soaking, so I'm going to get it fairly tight since it's a seat. You know, I don't want to break it. Whoops, that slipped. But I'm going to pull it fairly snug, you know. And the whole weave will take care of itself. So some will have a little more tension just by human nature than others, but you can you can get them darn close with feel over time. Okay, so come up this hole. If you can see that. So I'm working back towards my center. I just have a long piece of cane, okay? And you want to be cognizant underneath what's going on. This one's twisted. It's untwisted now. Nice and shiny. I feel it. Okay. Now, you can really do this whole thing with two pegs on the seat. 
So I'll take this peg out, put it here, shiny on top, and let's lace this thing up. Okay. Tight. We'll coax it. That peg's holding the tail, so it's going to stay. Okay, find the shiny. It's down. We'll come up this hole here. And repeat. So what I might do is, is just go this way and get to these decisions and then just do the same thing on this side. We'll see how long this takes. And if somebody can edit videos and tell me how to splice them together, let me know in the right spot. Okay. Got old man computer skills this juncture. Okay, we'll keep the shiny on the bottom. That looks great. We can steal this peg. And by the way, I'm using um, medium cane on the bottom. These holes are a little closer together, which is going to be great because they're going to be smaller than these holes visually, which is right. This always should be airier, in my opinion, than the seat for sure. So I'm doing it the same way. This is two size canes. It's got medium horizontal and vertically, but all the verticals are narrow medium. It's half a millimeter, you can't see it. But it made the holes here in the back, um, you know, a little bigger than a nickel, a nickel size. Um, sheet cane for a seat is often uh, half an inch, you know, smaller than a dime. So uh, anyway, I'm using a medium here. And I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the diagonals, and it should uh, work out great. It get, makes the, the chair a lot stronger, too, when you use fat. If you can use the fat as possible on the tic-tac-toe part, I can use this peg again. This part's fun. I mean, it pretty straightforward until you have to start making decisions, but... It's looking square, so it's, I think my layout was just right. I can steal this pen to there. Feels great. Steal that peg. Look down it. Yeah, I love it. Okay. 
And it just feels so comforting to work on the chair after our re repairs. I, you know, it puts a lot of stress on a chair when you weave it. It's like a corset that you put on the chair and then feed it 30 pounds when it all dries out. And pray for the best. <laughs> so I don't know how else to describe it, but it, it puts some tweak on the chair for sure. That's why they crack in the holes. When you drill the holes, you remove half the wood so it only has half the strength with its pull. And that's why they break at the holes. Because all the wood's missing of half the original situation. Coax over. Like it. Let's see if I predicted the length of this cane to be just right. We'll see. It's getting shorter. Okay, coax it, turn it in the hole, peg it. See, I've got just lots of extra pegs. None of these are doing anything. You really only need the f first and the end almost. That one's not doing anything. Yep. I always have too many. Okay, my cane's getting shorter. Pull taut. Yeah. Coax. This will be our last one if it'll make it. I need a three inch tail. Uh, I think I was one hole short. Oh well. We'll see what happens. Okay, so there's the end of my piece. Right? All right, I'm gonna put my head in here so I can look down the chair. I wanna make sure that everything is copacetic. Okay. All right, I've got another piece soaking. And this one of my smallers. Okay. All right, stand by one moment. Okay, I'm gonna give that piece of cane another minute or so to uh, soak. One thing, um, you know, this is referred to as the binder cane. This is what trims it all out, right? And you can see that, you know, my first, remember my first one that I followed the template on is nice and, you know, on the chair at the sides. And it, you know, if that were any looser, that would be a, an issue. But it came out just right. It's wicked tight. You can hear it all over and this it's just I love it but these are bamboo skewers from the grocery store in the uh, China, in the oriental food section when I get a uh, when I don't get anything I get these anyway <laughs> so anyway um, and then this binder cane comes in different widths I'm gonna it, these holes are bigger on the seat so I'm going to use a fatter binder cane. So it's going to look fatter on the seat like it should and then a little airier at the top. And it should really come together. So, okay, I think my cane's ready. This doesn't have to be the most supple cane in the world when we're kind of doing this part of the situation. But it definitely needs to be well on its way. Whoops, I grabbed a long piece, but we'll have plenty left. Okay, so we're getting into decision time. So once again, let me find which way is the front. Okay, this tells me right off the hip, major snag there. So I wouldn't want to pull it this way, it'll break. So this is my weaving end, this is my berry end. 
way down here. Okay? So I think I'm going to bury it on the same side right here. I, I like, don't like to get buried too many near the corners. Just from experience, the corners tend to have a lot of tails. But there's a tail here, so I am going to put this one here. Just be cognizant of the corner situation. All right, so we'll come down to the next hole. Shiny side up. And these, even if it gets twisted, you can spin it right at the end if you need to, as long as you see what's going on. Okay, I'll coax it. Those are my markers. Okay, perfect. All right, so my markers are right on. Okay, so the individual that wove the chair the first time went from this hole to this hole, okay? That's going to be my last thing before I have to cut this piece, I have a feeling. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm coming up into one of my markers. I'll take it out. Okay, and we know this is the last hole because it is the last hole and it's going to have to swoop out or it's going to cover this hole. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a peg in the hole that I don't want it to cover and I'm going to go ahead and swoop it out now so I can get the right tension. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn this one. If I didn't put that peg in there and pulled it too tight, when you swoop it later, it could break it. So we're going to swoop it now. And let it develop memory. Okay. And it's not swooping much. But what we've achieved, okay... It could come out of this hole. See, see how we have uh, seven eighths probably between each of these. And then this is narrow where it swoops out. I think the best decision is to go in this hole. Let's see what this looks like and put a peg here. Let me look at that real quick. Even though the last weaver did it, I think this, is, this will look better. And I've also read that when you can leave your corner holes empty, there's nothing wrong with that. It'll weave right all back together. So that's not an issue either. Okay, so let me do that real quick. Let's put it in this hole and see if the spacing looks more even. So I'm going to put it in this hole. This hole gets a lot of stuff in it. So, I mean, this, this might work just right. I think that looks better. Does that show up on film as being more even? Yeah, it's just a bunch of railroad tracks. Okay, so I'm going to go in that hole. But remember, these get doubled, and the double is on this side. Okay, so I'm not going to pull this one just wicked tight. Because he's going to continue to swoop to make room for his buddy. See, it gets even closer. I almost could consider this hole, the next one down, but I'm not. Okay, so I'm going to not pull that jam tight yet. Okay, this piece here is so long, I'm going to leave it dangling under the chair. I'm going to go ahead and put it in a coil. Let me see if I have a twist tie handy. I do not, but I can just tie a piece of cane around it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this later. So instead of cutting it and using it in a bunch of short pieces, 
I'm just going to let it dangle under the chair. And I'm going to use it possibly on coming this direction. We'll see what happens. Okay. So I've got it in a nice, neat coil. The material's just fine. I didn't have a twist tie handy, so I'm just going to tie a piece of cane and a knot, and that'll hold it. Till I need it. Whoops, I lost it. Alright, stand back. Alright, excuse me there. Let me wrap this back up real quick. Okay, as long as I can keep it out of my way. Nice and fairly neat without hurting the material. I'm going to do that. Okay. All right, let's check all this. Nothing slipped. Feels great. Okay. Yeah, okay. I could go in this hole, okay? But I'm not. Because the remember these get doubled and the double is on this side. So on this side it's going to get a little crowded. But if I go in this hole over here, I'm committed to go into this hole over here. And that could throw the whole thing off. So I'm going to leave it. I'm just one hole from the original person's idea. And um, I think this is going to work better. So anyway, we've got the material there. So now I need this other piece of material. And what we're going to do, this might now change these, okay? So what we're going to do is try to keep this distance railroad tracking along and see where it ends up, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bury the next one in the next hole, okay? And then I'm just going to hold it up here, and we're going to find out which hole it railroad tracks parallel with. And we're going to put it in that hole. Okay, these are, these are references from how it was done initially, but it's going to look exactly the same, but better. Or, I mean, you know, nobody will know that it's different, but it's going to look better, I think. Okay, so next piece. Yeah, and I think we'll end it at... Put my little nippers. At this side situation, we'll see. I'll see how much time has elapsed. About 30 minutes. Okay, so I'll again find where the yeah, so this is the front. This is the weaving, the pull. It pulls across those nodes perfectly smooth. This is the part I bury. Okay, so let's bury it this side now. Shiny side up. Cane looks good, no defects. Okay, we'll go in this hole. Leave about a two by four, three and a half inch tail or so. Peg it. All right, now, which hole looks the best? I think that, okay, it could go to this one, but it gets close. Remember, it has another buddy on the side. I think it's that one. I'm going in that hole. Even though it's different, it's so subtle. But it's gonna look like a it's gonna look really cool. Okay. Or it'll look like we gave it good thought. Best we can. Okay. Let's 
So there's a little curve in that. It's not too late to switch them over. Okay. All right. So now. Okay. Now this distance is left. And that could be why they chose this hole. They got to here, and they didn't have enough room for nice pretty X's there, and they backed up, you know? This could be a backup situation. So let's take a look. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this pretty piece that's left and wrap it up as well. And I've got a twist tie. And I'm just going to leave this one hanging. Sometimes I'll get to the end and find them hanging. So i got to remember to use them right when I get to them. If you go by them, you can't use them. You weave by them. But they sure come in handy. It's amazing how many steps it can save as far as tying things off and keeping it neat. Okay, so grab my next piece of cane. And now for the last hole here, this is the last hole in the chair, we're going to come up into here somewhere. And so that's going to make our X's a little smaller here, but we're going to have tons at the front, tons at the back. The sides kind of are what they are. I like to see, you know, I could stop here, but that's too big. Yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't cut it. So let's see what it looks like. But that could be, I bet the original weaver might have done the same thing I just did. Put it in this hole first and then said, hmm, I like it a little bigger here. And went to that hole, maybe, I don't know. Alright, so now we're going to bury it in the last hole. Right, this isn't so important now, but I always just in the habit of finding the right ends. Isn't a bad one to make. Okay, so... Now, if I hold this one, yeah, we're going to have some pretty X's here. That's right. I like that. Okay, that one, too, yeah, I like that hole there. That's within our tolerance. That'll be fun. Okay, but I'm going to peg the one next to him, as I should have pegged this one. I'll peg, okay, let me go in the right place. Okay, now this one, see how, it, see how it has a node right here? It looks like it's going to go just, nope, what I need to do, this is a good, good situation because I can just bring this up. I don't want that node to cross that crevice it will break. So now it's below it, it's inside the chair. Okay, and remember it gets a double. So I'll have a little smaller X's here, but that's the right distance. You know, that, this is telling me everything I need to know. Okay, so with this one, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Let me look at the tension again. I like that. I'm going to pull it a little tighter. Okay, so what I'm going to do for length, just for the length of the video and not to bore you, I'm going to come over and do the same thing, okay? And then on the next episode, I'm going to start at this corner. I'm going to start here, okay? Or I'll have to look at the pictures again. But this is going to be, see how the first one, I don't know if you can see it. Let me adjust this. See the top of this rocker? Like I said before, I've seen them where they go from here, swoop it down and up into here. I think it looks funny. The seat, like the top, goes from corner to corner, okay? 
Um, which isn't always the case, but I'll have to look at the pictures again, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I remember this first one going from this corner to this corner, and then it kind of swoops into the pattern. I think from here over might be too far back. Let me see something. But what I want to do is tell you what I'm going to do before I get there, and then when I come back, we'll finish it up. But if I were to go from here, so the next, the next after I finish these ver the verticals, then I lay on top, no weaving still. Okay, if I were to go from there, that's the first hole. To that hole, you know, with a swoop, I like that. I like that a lot. That's going to have nice X's at the back. The gentle swoop, that's the way to do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go from, it's going to be a little different than this, okay? This saved me from having to get funky up in here, which I don't like. That's not the situation with the seat. I like this better. So it's going to look a lot better. So what I'm going to do is go from the first hole back and weave all the way forward until I hit this curvature, okay? Let me put the camera back down. I'm sorry. What I'm going to do is go from this first hole back and just weave my horizontals back and forth, just lacing it up like we did here until I get to a decision point. And that decision point occurs when this I run out of squareness and then I have to start coming from, you know, hole to hole in here to fill it in. So at the next video, I'll have it all the way to here and then we'll fill it in and then I'll show you um, the next step. It's going to take a couple more short episodes to show the filming of this seat, so I'm just going to do it anyway. This can be a little tighter, feels to me. This can be a little tighter. I left them a little looser, but that's okay. All right, stand by. So thanks again for tuning in to another segment. I'm going to continue on. I have uh, the delivery next Friday. So I have six days to um, finish the seat. So it's going to probably take all of that. I have a, another job at night, and then I have these other projects going on. So um, I'll try not to make the video too long. There are plenty of seven-step method uh, videos on YouTube and whatnot that you can uh, take a look at that will go into more detail. But I do want to show you. Um, how I achieve the back and it's the same process seven steps I never vary from it a lot of people do but it's always rang true for me so anyway I appreciate it y'all have a great day all right see you later